All right, the environment I'm in today isn't the most conducive to YouTubing. It's loud, windy, but there was something I was excited about and wanted to share with you guys. I've got an iPhone Red and I wanted to be there for the unboxing. Oh, that's the best part. There it is in all of its red glory. So from a product review perspective, this is just an iPhone 7, so there isn't a lot new. You haven't already heard about it, but it is product red, meaning a portion of the sales are gonna be going to HIV AIDS prevention, and it is really beautiful. Uh, white face, I'm a black face guy, but the back makes up for it. Since there's nothing new I have to say about iPhone 7s, what I wanna talk about instead is things that I wish for in the new iPhone 8. This is just a quick list of stuff I came up with on the plane ride here, and as I landed, I saw that MKBHD just released a video about this too. I didn't watch it yet intentionally, but uh, he is a YouTuber I'm a big fan of. So I might be missing really obvious things that other people are talking about, but this is what came off the top of my mind. I think the most obvious thing people are looking for is a new design language in the iPhone 8. I'm not the kind of person that feels like these products need to be redesigned just for design's sake and for the sake of having something new, but this hardware design is older than usual, and there's no reason to suggest that it can't be improved. If you already saw my Galaxy S8 video, you'd see that I think that they have set a new bar for hardware design, and I'm still going to stick with iPhones, but there's certain things about the Samsung that I think iPhone's going to have to catch up to. Samsung's big leap forward was the almost bezel-less design that's been rumored for iPhones for a while. We've all kind of seen it coming, we knew it was going to happen eventually, but you know what? Samsung got there first. I'm hoping that Apple doesn't follow the exact same path as Samsung. I don't think they need to curve the edges as much as they do. A much more subtle curve on the sides might work well, and I really want to never have a false click ever. I had a lot of false touches in the S7. The S8 is better, but on an iPhone, it never happens. Also a tangent, once there is no bezel, will the white front face make any more sense? Just imagine this almost all gone. There'd just be a sliver of white at the top and bottom. I'm gonna make a prediction that if Apple nearly eliminates the bezels, they're gonna go all black or maybe all matching color. Oh yeah, no wait, that's it. They're gonna match the color all the way around. Part of all this is also making a narrower phone with an equally large screen size. That's kind of just a consequence of this redesign. It's the way that Samsung's are now. I've been torn for a while because I love the larger screen on the iPhone 7 Plus, but I do prefer the smaller iPhones in hand. I'd love to see them meet somewhere in the middle. I think wireless charging is one of the best features that Apple's always been missing out on. Here's what I hope they've been doing that Apple's been waiting for the technology to get good enough that there can be a larger touch area. There's been a lot of rumors about like across the room wireless charging, which isn't gonna happen. But if there's just a little bit larger area of where the phone will notice the charging, that would be a huge improvement. Better selfie camera, Apple lost the lead on that a long time ago. Okay, this next one I wrote down is more RAM, but I, I don't know if that's really what the problem is. Basically, I want apps to be able to stay in memory longer. My most common issue is when I'm working on Instagram posts and I've been filling it out and it dumps everything that I've been working and needs to reload it when I go back into the app. Other apps have this problem in various ways where they just kind of forget what you were doing and take a while to boot up. But with Instagram, you can actually lose work. So that's where it's bothered me the most. I don't know if this is a software or hardware problem, I just want it to get better. Apple's gonna have to keep moving forward somehow in biometrics. I don't know if they're gonna go into the route that Samsung has of having a whole variety of different ways of scanning yourself to unlock your phone. Most of all, they're gonna need to get the fingerprint reader placement right. Maybe in the center, like the Google Pixel, that seems to have worked pretty well. And improved battery life. This is kind of always on everyone's wish list because traditionally what Apple's done is just made phones thinner with effectively the same battery life. That was one nice thing about the iPhone 7 is that it stayed the same thickness, so they were able to keep the same amount of battery and take advantage of things like processor enhancements. So hopefully there's been some leaps forward in processor technology that I don't know about. That'll make battery life even better for the iPhone 7S, iPhone Pro, iPhone 8, iPhone the iPhone 7 Plus's zoom lens was great, but unfortunately it didn't perform very well indoors or in adverse lighting situations, so hopefully they'll add a faster lens to it, a better image processor, whatever it takes to make that image cleaner on par with the wide lens, hopefully. All right, now we're getting to my stretch goals. These might be dreaming a little too big, but I'm not Apple, I don't have to make this stuff. Add a wide angle lens. I would love to see lenses all the way across the back of this thing. We go 16 millimeter, 24 millimeter, 28 millimeter, 35 millimeter, 50 millimeter, 85 millimeter, and 135 millimeter, wouldn't that be great? Okay, or just a wider angle. The way that LG G6 did this is really, really great. That's the one thing that I miss from all the other phones that LG really did well, is being able to switch between the regular and wide lens works so well, especially on the selfie camera. I don't know if this is a practical idea, but it would be awesome. So yeah, I'm saying on both sides, wide, wide. Two more lenses for a total of five lenses. I know it would anger so many people, but I want to see a USB-C cable on everything. I don't have that many devices that even use it yet. I don't have the ports on my computer, but I know all the reasons this will be a great future and I'm totally ready for it. Also looking at this red iPhone, why not have the whole color lineup just like the iPods? 
it seems like this is inevitable someday. Just like, let's do that now. In iOS, I'd love to see the screen icons be able to be rearranged just like on Android. On bigger screens, the bottom real estate of the phone becomes more and more important and the fact that iPhones stack to the top, this must be obvious to Apple as well. I need to like put all of my important apps last just so I can reach them. Fix AirDrop so that it works every single time I use it. Why did I write that as a stretch goal? That seems pretty reasonable. Okay, here's a few things I'm not at all concerned about. Don't add a dedicated hardware button for Siri. Not that I thought you were going to, but in, in case you're thinking about it, we don't need that. Touched on this before, but please don't curve the screen too much. And please don't make it too much thinner. I know, Apple, you love to do this as often as you can, but just don't make it too much thinner. It's at a pretty good place right now. And I'd much rather have that battery life. And that's all I'd say about iPhones. Um, I wanted to update anybody that watched my vlogging mic search. Uh, in case you're wondering, I haven't found a solution yet. Right now, I am using the... <laughs> podcast mic that has worked so well for my road recordings. And I also have the Sennheiser on top of my camera, but it honestly kind of sucks. I don't like using it. And now we're off to Coachella, and since I have kind of limited access with my cameras, I'm going to be using this iPhone 7 to do some vlogging. So I'll see you guys in there. Bye.